Vincent Arthur John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> the Captain's Car, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests Bill Pertwee, Larry Martin, Betty Marsden and Gerard Green. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. With Hitler continuing his tyrannical attempts to bring the whole of Europe under the heel of the Nazi jackboot, the people of Britain are becoming even more adamant that they will never succumb. At the headquarters of Warrington-on-Sea Home Guard, Sergeant Wilson is already in the office when Captain Mannering arrives. Evening, Wilson. Oh, good evening, sir. Anything in the post? Well, there's a, there's a memo here from uh, Colonel Masters, sir. Apparently the French general is definitely visiting Warmington and GHQ are planning to use a unit of the Home Guard to provide the Guard of Honour. Well, I hope it's not us. Damned red tape. Anyway, I've never had much time for the French. Hmm? I thought they were regarded as very fine soldiers. Mm, only up to a point. They were <laughs> never much good after lunch, you know. Really, weren't they? No, 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 no. All that wine and garlic, very debilitating. Yes. <laughs> well, of course, you know about these things. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all that sloppy kissing they get up to. <laughs> Can't even pin a medal on a chap without kissing him. Yes, well, if, if you were picked as the guard commander, you would probably get one. A medal? No, a kiss. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure you, Wilson. I'm not having any of that sort of thing. Come in. I'm sorry to interpose, Captain Mannering, but there is a lady outside. Oh, really? Not Mrs. Mannering, is it? <laughs> no, no, sir, no. When I say a lady, I don't mean a woman, although, of course, she is a woman, otherwise she couldn't be a lady, which she is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean she is a lady because that is part of her name, Lady Maltby. Lady Maltby? Oh, what does she want? Oh, she didn't give me any confidence about that, sir. Lords and ladies very rarely do, you know, sir. When we was in the Sudan, Lord Kitchener never gave any of us any confidence. No, no, all right, sir. <laughs> Show her ladyship in. Very good, sir. Right, sir. Better tidy yourself up a bit, Wilson. Hmm? Do your collar up for a start. All right, sir. Right, sir. And as soon as you've paid your respects to her ladyship, you can withdraw. I expect she only wants to deal with officers. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I... I, I... Ah, this will be her. Come in. Her ladyship, the Lady Maltby. Ah, good morning, your ladyship. Good morning. This is indeed an honour. I'm Captain Mannering. Ah, yes. I've heard about you. <laughs> this is my sergeant, who's just leaving. Oh, I do hope not. <laughs> Hello, Arthur. How nice to see you. <laughs> And you, Angela, yes. I, I must say you're looking absolutely marvellous. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, <laughs> Her ladyship oh, seems lovely. to have confidence very in lovely. Mr. Wilson. <laughs> I think they met previous, sir. Yes, I'd rather got that impression. Thank you, Corporal. That would be all. Yep. One moment, Corporal. I, I know your face, don't I? Oh, yes, your ladyship. I've been purveying meat to your establishment ever since 1933, when his late lordship fell out with Sainsbury's. <laughs> yes, of course. It's Mr. Jones. Oh, by the way, there'll be one book extra this week. My son is home on leave. Oh, you leave it to me, your ladyship. I shall be able to do your chops or a nice bit of shin. Thank you so much, sir. Right, that'll be all, Jones. Thank you. Yeah, right, sir. Very good, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> well, now, Lady Malton. Oh, Arthur. Oh, it really is good to see you again. Yes, it is, sir. I, I quite agree. It's absolutely wonderful. Yes. So now just coming home, how, how is he? Oh, he got married, you he know. Did. Yes, he did. did. Yes, Aunt uh, Lessie, tell me. <laughs> Look, I hate to break this up. Of course, but... you see, Nigel. Nigel is with the blues Is he really? Now. Is he? My, my, my grandfather was in the blues, you know. <laughs> yeah, Wilson, hmm? I'm quite sure Lady Maltby hasn't come here to discuss your family affairs. Oh, you must forgive us, but it's been so long since we were able to have a, a chin wag. Yes, well, you've both made up for it now, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
actually, actually, I really came here to talk about my car. Your car? Yes. You see, I can't get petrol for it, and it just sits there in the garage. Uh, so I thought perhaps that someone could use it, you know, to help the war effort. <laughs> what kind of a car is it? Oh, well, just an ordinary sort of Rolls. Oh, just a, a Rolls? <laughs> Uh, the, the thing is, you'll see, who would make the best use of it? The home guard or the warden? Oh, the home guard, definitely. Uh, oh, I'm so glad you think so. That Mr. Hodges, you know, he seems such an awfully common man. Oh. Besides, you see, I already know Mr. Jones, and of course, Arthur is such a darling. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're very nice, too, when one gets to know you. <laughs> I can assure you, Lady Mulby, that if you allow us to use your car, we will take great care of it. My men are very reliable. I'm sure they are. I'm very particular who I have in my platoon, you know. Every man is handpicked. Hey, Captain Manring, oh. we're all lined up out there waiting, waiting, and if you're going to be much longer, we're all going home. <laughs> I just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> Good heavens! Who was that? That was Private Fraser. Oh. He's a rough diamond, you know. Pure gold underneath. Just the man to have beside you in a scrap. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, sir, but what would we actually do with Angela's Rolls Royce? Well, I should use it as a staff car, of course. Oh, oh I see. Yes, yes. There's all sort of shiny in Rolls Royces. isn't there? You can camouflage it, uh, as far as I'm concerned. There you are, Wilson. <laughs> Lady Maltby says that we can camouflage it. Yeah, but I mean, the large Rolls Royce, uh, won't it look a bit silly? How do you mean? Well, I, I suppose we could always sit you on a cushion. <laughs> <laughs> sit me on a cushion? Well, I must be all. I'll tell my chauffeur Glossop to drive the rolls over on Saturday. Thank you very much indeed, Your Ladyship. Really is most generous of you. Yes, Andrew, you're an absolute brick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodbye, Captain Mannering. Au revoir, Arthur. I'll see myself out. Bye-bye, Angela. Remember me to Nigel. And me. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Oh, well. Isn't she a sweet person, don't you think so? I think it's pathetic. Hmm? <laughs> well, what is you? Hmm? Kowtowing to her just because she's got a title. Kowtowing? I wasn't kowtowing at all. Well, I can assure you a title cuts no ice with me. You can tell that to your auntie Lettuce. <laughs> ah, there you are, Mannering. You've done me right in the eye, haven't you? What are you talking about, Hodges? And how dare you barge into my office? Never mind about that. I've just met Lady Maltby. She was thinking of giving me that car. Now you stuck the sherbet in and put her off me. We didn't put her off you. Just so happens that uh, we know her ladyship very well socially. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Me and my lads is providing half the guard of honour for the French general on Saturday. And I just hope you're not providing the other half. Because I don't want to be stuck opposite your ugly mugmate. How dare you? And I'll tell you something else, Napoleon. From now on, you better watch your step. <laughs> Because if I see even a chink of light from this all, or if you shine a torch, or if you leave as much as a bicycle around without immobilising it, I'll have you. I haven't got a bicycle. Then you better immobilise your bath chair. <laughs> oh, he really is the most awful fellow, isn't he? Well, what do you expect? Mm. No business to be chief warden at all. Chap's a greengrocer. <laughs> so was Lord Maltby. Oh, was he really? Mm. In a big way of business, I suppose. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's not what you know or who you know. It's how much of it you have. Yeah, all right, Wilson. <laughs> Don't have any of that bullshit talk here. <laughs> I'll just have a word with the men. <laughs> now, pay attention, men. I'm proud to announce that another vehicle has been added to our battle fleet. It is, in fact, a Rolls-Royce staff car. <laughs> Can I drive it, Mr. Manring? Certainly not, Pike. Well, bags I first ride in it. Be then. quiet, boy. <laughs> ah, evening, Captain Manring. Oh, good evening, Colonel. I assume you got my memo confirming the visit of the French general on Saturday? Yes, I did indeed, sir. Very exciting. Yes, well, as I happen to be passing your HQ tonight, I thought I'd just pop in, because I'm sure you'd like to know that. Your platoon has been selected to provide the guard of honour outside the town hall. Oh. 
Thank you, sir. An honor, indeed. <laughs> there you are, men. You see the reward you get for being smart? Yeah, another hour of cleaning and blankoing. Yes, of course. One of the reasons we chose your platoon, Captain Manning, is because of the speech which has to be made before the general's departure. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Yes, it has to be in French. Oh. Well, I suppose I could practice. Yes, well, according to our records, your sergeant speaks fluent French, so he's the obvious choice. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it was all that obvious, no. But, but, <laughs> do you speak French, Wilson? Well, you know, uh, what you might call uh, petit peu. A what? Petit peu. I see. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, I've been asked by area to make Saturday as smart an occasion as possible. I can't see how it's going to be very smart if we have those wardens sprawling all over the town hall steps. Yes, you may well be right. Yes, I can see that the wardens could quite easily make it look a bit of a shamble. Yes, I'll tell you what, Mannering, I'll fix it with the mayor and the town clerk. Huh? In the meantime, you can take it that your platoon will provide the whole guard of honour. Huh? And Uncle Arthur will make the speech in French. <laughs> General, is that, uh... mm, Wait a minute. Uh, <clears throat> uh, mon cher General, nous autres... Uh, uh, nous autres... Oh, huh? hello, Uncle Arthur. Ah. What are you doing here so early? Well, I thought I'd be first so I could rehearse my speech for this afternoon. I bet Mr. Manorin wishes he could speak French <laughs> so that he could make a speech. Yeah, I, I expect he does, yes, yes. I bet he'll be ever so jealous. When you get kissed by the general. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Mannering and I have never really been that close. <laughs> All right, pop it to the office and answer that, will you, Frank? Yes. All right, Uncle Arthur. Oh, where was I? Ah. Oh, yes. Oh. Mon cher General, nous autres sont très honorés de votre visite. Yes, that's not bad, I suppose. That's what I said. Uh, uh, nous espérons que vous pourrez le gagner. That can't be right, no. Yeah. Uh, should it be Pouvé? Pouvé? Should it be Pouvé, do you think? Hmm? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> that what was Lady Maltby's chauffeur on the phone. Oh, oh, yes, of course, Glosser. But what did he want? Well, hmm? he was on his way to the paint shop yes. to get the Rolls-Royce camouflage. Oh, yes. But he's run out of petrol just outside the town hall, so now he's stuck there. Yes, well, he'll just have to leave it where it is and shift it later when he's got some Yeah, petrol. but you don't understand, you see. Hmm? He's been told to shift it straight away because they're expecting the mayor's car. And the Rolls is in the way. Anyway, I told him you and I will go over there and help. Ah. Well, come on, Uncle Arthur. You and the chauffeur can push it and I'll steer. Talking about Frank, we, we can't push a great big car like that. Of course we can. You're ever so muscular. Mum's always saying so. <laughs> she really? Anyway, I might be able to find some petrol. Well, what about Captain Mannering and the others? The parade's due to start in 20 minutes. Well, that's all right. I've written them a note. Now, come on, Uncle Arthur. No, come on, Frank, come on. For heaven's sake, Frank, please. You always want to do things in such a hurry. Sir, here are the papers you wanted from your office. Oh, yes. Thank you, Fraser. And I found this wee note on your desk. It's from Private Pike. What does it say? Rolls, broken down, outside town hall, we've gone to help. Failed to see what possible help Wilson, of all people, could be. <laughs> Mind you, perhaps we'd better do something. I know. Jones. Yes, sir? Take your van down to the town hall and tow it to the paint shop. The town hall, sir? No, the... <laughs> the rolls. Oh, I see. Very good, sir. Fraser and Walker, you go with him. I'll do that, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm all steady, Uncle Arthur. No, Frank, I, I, I still don't think we should have taken this petrol out of Mr. Hodges' murder bag. I mean, really. Honestly, I mean, it's practically stealing. No, it isn't. What? We requisitioned it. Anyway, I left him a note. There. That's the lot. I expect Glossop will drive us both to the paint shop. But first, um, put the tin and funnel away. All right. Well, go on, then. Hurry up, Frank. I'm coming, Uncle Arthur. Smashing, isn't it? <laughs> I bet this will make Mr. Mannering feel ever so important. Oh, I don't know. He has managed it so far without a rose. <laughs> All right, Arthur, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. 
Hey, look, Uncle Arthur. There's another Rolls pulling up outside the town hall. That'll probably be the mayor's car now, remember? Glossop said they were expecting it. Oh, yeah, of course. Hey, look at the number plate. <laughs> TM1. <laughs> TM. Oh, that obviously stands for the mayor. Hmm. <laughs> hey, the chauffeur's got out. He's going inside. Oh, can't see any more. Town hall's gone round the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Yeah, all right. Blimey, Jonesy, can't you get this old van of yours to go any faster? <laughs> I must say, Jonesy, I find the idea of this old van of yours towing another vehicle highly amusing. <laughs> I should think it's more likely we'll be needing a tow ourselves. Be quiet. Look, there's the town hall on the left. Yeah, and there's the rolls outside. How can I see any sign of Sergeant Wilson or, or young Pikey? Well, perhaps they've given up and gone back to the hall. You can hardly expect them to push that thing all the way to the paint shop. Hey, hold on. Huh? We'd better make sure it's the right car before we tow it away. Of course it's the right car. Look at the number plate. TM1. What's that stand for, then? Thomas Maltby, of course. <laughs> anyway, Joe, the rope's in the back. Come on, hop out and do the necessary, will you? And then we can tow it down to the paint shop. OK, Corporal, you're the boss. Yep. Uh, have you any idea, Jonesy, how much man are in paying for this camouflaging job? Ooh, about eight pounds, I think. Why? It's just that I have a spray gun in my workshop, which I use for touching up the hairs. I could do the job myself. And what's more... I'll do it for seven pounds. Oh. I don't think Mr. Manley would like that job. It smacks of bribery and seduction. <laughs> I don't see why. After all, it's just dirty old brown and green paint. And we'll be saving money, mind you, son. Saving the platoon funds. Well, well, all right, Jock. You're on. Good. Hope it won't take you too long to do the camouflaging, Jock. Huh? Otherwise, Captain Manley will wonder where we've got to. Any sign of them yet, Godfrey? No, uh, none at all. I can't understand it. It's been two hours now. What on earth? Right, Napoleon, you've gone too far this time. What are you on about now, Hodges? Listen, mate, your hooligans have pinched my petrol, and they didn't even siphon it. They turned my bike up and poured it out. <laughs> it was like it was a ruddy teapot. <laughs> And they left it on its side. Nonsense, my men don't do that sort of thing. Well, how do you explain this note, then? Petrol requisitioned F. Pike. Let me see that. That's not how you spell requisitioned. Yeah, I know. He's left out one of the Ks. <laughs> anyway, another thing. You needn't think you've got rid of us wardens off that parade. I'm appealing to the Home Secretary. Irby Morrison will sort you out, mate. Mr. Manorin! Oh, really? What now? We've got the rolls, Mr. Manorin. It's outside now. Oh, Frank, now calm down. Don't get so excited. The paint shop did it right away, Mr. Manorin. And I rode in the back and I waved to everybody and I pretended I was a field marshal. <laughs> I'd better come and have a look at it. Hey, never mind about the car, Napoleon. What are you going to do about my petrol? I'm too busy to argue with you now. I'm going to inspect my new staff car. Yeah, but I mean... By I two, yes. That's very impressive. Paint shop have done a splendid job with the camouflage as well. You know, Wilson, hmm? there's nothing like a Rolls Royce, though. Uh -huh. Look at that craftsmanship. British throughout. Now, I say it'll look awfully good as a staff car. Good? I'll say it'll look good. I bet there isn't another one like it in the entire British Isles. <laughs> Lord, sir, I think you may have spoken too soon. Now, look, look. Great Scott. It's another rose. Yes, it's the same model. It's even camouflaged like ours. It's twins. What? <laughs> that Jones driving it? I don't understand this, sir. Why have you got two? Well, typical mannering, isn't it? One on and one in the wash. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Wilson, where did you get this rose from? From outside the town hall. Angela's chauffeur was with it. And where on earth did Jones get his? I know it is, sir. We'd better ask him. Believe me, I intend to. Jones! Yes, sir? Where did you get that rose from? From outside the town hall, sir. Good heavens. Where did you get that one from? <laughs> from outside the town hall. Oh, don't start that all. <laughs> Oh, what now? Yes, Godfrey, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, Captain Manry. I just had Mr. Upton, the town clerk, on the telephone. What does he want? 
Well, it seems that the mayor has lost his Rolls Royce. Lost it? <laughs> Good Lord. Wilson, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Believe it or not, sir, I am. <laughs> Just a minute. Godfrey, why did the town clerk ring us? Does he know that we've got it? Oh, no. It's not that, sir. He knew we had a lot of men here, so he wondered if you could get them to look for the missing rolls. Confounded cheek. We haven't got time to go out and look for missing Rolls Royces. You don't have to. We all know where it is, don't we? <laughs> yes, yes, that's a point. <laughs> you keep out of this, Hodges. Who is to speak, sir? Yes, James. I just thought I'd point out, sir, that as we know where it is, it won't take us long to find it. <laughs> One other thing, Captain Mannering. Mr. Upton said he hoped he'd be able to find the mayor's car quite quickly because the French general is supposed to be leaving in it after this afternoon's ceremony. Oh, really? Wilson, none of this would have happened if you hadn't taken away Lady Maltby's car without my orders and with my petrol. Once and for all, Hodges, will you keep quiet? Uh, the thing is, what are we going to do about the mayor's car? They can't use it this afternoon with all that camouflage painted on it. Could you spray it black again, Mr. Fraser? Uh huh. Yeah, I might be able to. What time is it now? Nearly half past one. Two and a half hours. I, I could try. Good man, Fraser. For ten pounds, that is. Just you have that car outside the town hall by four o'clock. With any luck, nobody will be any the wiser. Oh, yes, they will, because I'm going to split. You're a sneak, that's what you are. <laughs> you can call me what you like, mate. But unless you let my lads parade this afternoon, Mannering, I'm going to tell the mayor what you've done with his motor. Very well, Hodges. It's sheer blackmail, but all right. You can come on the parade. Ah, that's more like it. I'll see you there, then. As General Kitchener used to say, sir, I think he's got us by the fuzzy buzzies. <laughs> Here, Napoleon... I've just come over to tell you that when you ball out all that rubbish about attention and present arms, my lads won't take the slightest bit of notice. But you'll make the whole parade a complete shambles. All right, then. I'll ball out the orders and your lot can take notice of me. Certainly not. Oh, well, please yourself. Don't say I didn't warn you. You know, so he really is the most unreasonable fellow. Captain Mannering, I think Private Fraser's arrived with the mayor's rolls. Ah, just in time. Where is it? Oh, there, sir. Just pulling up. But he hasn't painted it black. It's still camouflaged. What does the man think he's playing at? Perhaps he hadn't got any black paint. An undertaker with no black paint. Well. <laughs> it's highly unlikely. Fraser, huh? what's going on? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. But the founder couldn't get it dry in time. Huh? I'm awfully sorry, sir. I did my best, sir. I see. Well, thank you for trying. Anyway, sir... I thought that, under the circumstances, the best thing I could do be quiet, was to... Be quiet a minute, friend. I'm thinking. We'll tell the town clerk that we couldn't find the mayor's car, so we're letting the French general use our staff car instead. That's all very well, sir, but... Excuse me, Mr. Quite... Manorine. Look, I think the French general's coming out. Right, fall in, Fraser. No, but you, sir... Tell I... me afterwards, fall in. Oh, right, sir. You can't say I haven't tried... <laughs> Number one platoon, B Company, not the wardens. Be quiet, Rogers. <laughs> Stop! Out! Present! Arms! <laughs> Warmington on Sea Wardens, present! Still a pump! <laughs> Wilson. Look at Hodges, men, holding up those pumps. Making a mocker of the whole ceremony. Well, I, I suppose you could argue that at least they're trying. Anyway, it might have been worse. They could have presented buckets of water. <laughs> Number one platoon, B Company. Not the wardens. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do that. Order! 
War mit den Ossi-Woden oder Stille Pump. Go on, Wilson. I beg your pardon, sir? Step forward. Make your speech. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. <coughs> ah. <coughs> Mon cher General, nous autres, la Wilmington Ossi, some trees of What's he saying, Mr. Manrin? Oh, the usual trite rubbish. <laughs> It's just like Mum says, really. He can do anything if he gets the urge. <laughs> hey, look. The General's going to make a speech now. <clears throat> What's he saying, Mr. Manry? Oh, some French drivel. I don't think he drivels as well as Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Merci. Oh, look, he's just the mayor. Oh, and Mr. Wilson, and the town clerk. Look out, he's coming over here. <laughs> I think it's your turn, Mr. Manreen. Oh, <laughs> God forbid. Merci, mon capitaine. <laughs> Thank you. Merci. Uh, au revoir, mon capitaine. Uh, uh, goodbye, uh, uh, mon général. <laughs> Hey, don't I get a kiss? <laughs> Arthur, what do you think? Did you like it? Of course I didn't. I shall never understand one man kissing another. Uh, I mean, my speech, sir. What did you think? Well, it wasn't exactly how I'd have put it myself, but uh, at least it was brief. I thought you did very well, Uncle Arthur. Well, thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, sir, I had a quick word with the town clerk just now and explained that as we hadn't found the mayor's rolls... We've let the general use ours. Well done, Wilson. Hey, look, Mr. Manreen. The general's going. I wonder what the mayor would say if he knew that that was his shiny black rolls under all that brown and green paint. <laughs> Not so loud, Pike. Oh, God, come on. Come on, there's something I've just look, got Lord, to do. Look, 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 look. Look at the general's car. It's careering all over the road. Right, Wilson. It's going to hit that wall. <laughs> That was nasty. <laughs> I hope the general and the chauffeur aren't hurt. Yes, indeed, sir. Look, look, you see, they're getting out. They must be all right. Mind you, the car's in a pretty bad way. Just look at it. Yeah. When we do get it back, the mayor's not going to like all that damage. <laughs> I can't see why he should be very concerned. What do you mean, Jock? Well, as I've been trying to explain to Captain Money here, I did repaint the mayor's car block, but the damn thing hasn't dried in time for the ceremony. Mind you, by the time I get back to my workshop, it'll have dried nice and hard, but... I don't think I quite follow you, Fraser. <laughs> it's really quite simple, sir. When I found that the mayor's car wasn't drying quickly enough, I had to use my initiative and find another rolls to replace it. So I'm afraid that lump of twisted metal over there is your new stuff car, sir. Or it was. <laughs> and I've never even sat in the damn thing. <laughs> serves you right, Napoleon. Serves you ruddy well right. <laughs> In that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John the Measure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Betty Marsden, Lady Maltby, and Garrard Green as Colonel Masters. The Captain's Car was adapted for radio by Harold Snowden and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dyas.